Hello gorgeous peeps, I'm Chris from Techspert and today we're going to be checking out the regular Xiaomi 12 flagship smartphone which may not be quite as sexy as its very expensive Pro sibling here but in some ways it is actually better. You've got that same slick snappy D8 Gen 1 performance, you've got most of the same brilliant flagship features, another stunning bit of camera tech and it's all wrapped up in a shockingly miniature frame. All for just 749 US dollars and probably about the same amount in British quids. So let's rip the Xiaomi 12 on out of its box, take you on a full on tour, game and test, camera test, all that good stuff and compare side by side with the Pro model to see what you miss out on if you just go for the regular 12 flagship. And for more of the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. So first up, what do you get in that lovely white box? Well, you've got your shiny new Xiaomi 12, that 67 watt beast of an adapter, bit of USB cabling, oof. And it's good to see that even with its more expensive blows, Xiaomi still throws in a cheapy condom case just to keep it safe from harm. And yeah, that's it, pretty standard stuff. So let's check out the phone. Now I've got to say the first thing I absolutely adore about the regular Xiaomi 12 versus the Pro model is the fact that it's so surprisingly and lovably compact, just under 6.3 inches versus this just over 6.7 inch Godzilla. So while the Pro is definitely a two-handed beast uh, at best, the Xiaomi 12, you can quite comfortably use it with just the one hand, no worries whatsoever. As you can see, they're pretty similar design overall, despite the fact it is more compact. So very skinny bezels surrounding the display on both the Xiaomi 12 and the Pro. And once again, the screen just curves ever so subtly around the edges there. And while the Xiaomi 12 definitely has a bit of a heft to it, it certainly feels quite light compared with the Pro model at just 180 grams versus about 205 grams. Now both of these Xiaomi flagships sport a Gorilla Glass Victus screen, so that's a bit more shatter resistant compared with older versions of Gorilla Glass. So if you accidentally face plant these morphos, touch wood, they won't absolutely crumble. I have found it in my personal test that Gorilla Glass Victus does tend to scratch up a bit more easily than some of the earlier versions of Gorilla Glass, however. So it's a good thing that Xiaomi has put a pre-installed screen protector on both the 12 and the Pro just to help prevent that. And both the Xiaomi 12 and the Xiaomi 12 Pro sport a Gorilla Glass arse end as well, but it's Gorilla Glass Victus here on the Pro, whereas it's downgraded to Gorilla Glass 5 here on the Xiaomi 12. Should hopefully still prove nice and hardy though, and I love the fact you've got a matte finish on both of these handsets as opposed to the sort of glossy finish which picks up grubby marks and fingerprints all too easily. Thankfully, no such wars here. You won't have to be constantly buffing up the Xiaomi 12 uh, to keep it looking box fresh. And you've got the same small selection of colours, uh, regardless of your choice of Xiaomi 12 or Pro. You've got the likes of this super smart and almost business-like grey model. And then you've also got the likes of this lighter purple model, which I've got to admit, I'm definitely a fan of. No official IP rating for water and dust resistance, however, so I wouldn't go submerging them in water anytime soon, just in case. And the rest of the design, very similar indeed, right down to the metal frame that separates those two plates of glass. Now on the software side, no difference at all between these two smartphones. You basically got the latest, freshest Android 12 OS with a bit of Xiaomi's own MIUI 13 slapped on top. And this can be set up in the same way with a fairly stock Android kind of vibe. You've got an apps tray if you want it. You can drag down your notifications bar. You've got that lovely Xiaomi control center as well. Fast access to all your main toggles and everything. And most of those great Android 12 features are present and correct, including uh, notifications whenever an app suddenly decides to start using your camera or your microphone. There's also some other bits like the ability to change up the UI color scheme based on the wallpaper colors sadly missing in action. Still, Xiaomi more than makes up for this, to be fair, with its plethora of bonus features. There's so much extra stuff chucked on here. You've got wallpaper carousels, for instance. You've got a decent always-on display, which isn't an always-on effort by default, but you can actually have it always-on if you like or schedule it. Fitness fans can also measure their heart rate using the built-in optical fingerprint sensor. And speaking of which, like the Pro model, that once again seems to be a dependable effort, despite the fact it is just optical, not ultrasonic. Uh, it seems very fast acting. And certainly in the dozens of times I've tested it out so far, it doesn't seem to crap out on you. And you've got face unlock on there as well if you want it. And Xiaomi has even chucked a one-handed mode onto the Xiaomi 12, which to be fair is slightly awkward to activate. It usually takes me quite a few efforts. Not usually this many, of course. It's only because the bloody camera's rolling. Christ. 
Way there we go, at long bloody last. Uh, so that just drags everything down towards the bottom end of the screen if you need it. But as I say, the Xiaomi 12 is actually pleasingly friendly to one-handed use. But of course, MIUI has its bad points as well as its good points. And just like on the Pro, the regular Xiaomi 12 comes absolutely stacked with crapware. Lots of stuff pre-installed on here that you might not need and might actively definitely not want on your smartphone, including the likes of TikTok, you've got your Facebooks, Spotify, Amazon shopping, etc. But thankfully, you can tell the vast majority of it to bugger right off and off it goes. Storage-wise, no difference between the two there either. Both the Xiaomi 12 and its more premium Pro sibling sport up to 256 gigs of internal storage, although that's not expandable via micro SD. If you have a book inside, you'll find a reversible SIM tray. Well, definitely do not lose it because that would be a pain in the arse. Uh, and that's, so that can fit in basically two SIMs at the same time. Uh, but no space for those memory cards. So now let's have a squint at the display tech. And here on the Xiaomi 12, you've got a 6.28 inch panel versus the mighty 6.73 incher on that there Pro. But it's OLED tech on both the 12 and the 12 Pro, and both of these panels pump out stunning visuals with 10-bit color support. You've got Dolby Vision, HDR10+, all that hot jazz. It's a Full HD Plus resolution on the standard regular Xiaomi 12, 2400 by 1080 pixels versus the WQHD Plus Monster here on the Pro, 3200 by 1440 pixels. But because the regular Xiaomi 12 has a smaller display, those visuals still look just as crisp. Photos and video absolutely packed with fine detail. You've got that sharp contrast, nice deep blacks, pretty crisp whites as well. Although you can tinker with the color temperature and tones in the display settings if you want to tweak things a bit. Certainly on the default settings, I didn't really notice much difference at all in the, uh, the color tones, the color accuracy. Not much difference in the display settings between the two smartphones. The only real difference is the fact you can change the display resolution here on the Pro model, cycling between Full HD Plus and WQHD Plus, but otherwise you can play around with the colour schemes. I like leaving it on the default vivid mode, but you can dive into advanced settings and select a specific gamut if you like. You've also got an adaptive refresh rate on both of these chamois blows, but the difference is it's LTPO tech here on the Pro model. So while both smartphones can reach 120 hertz at their peak, only the Pro model can dip as low as 1 hertz when you're just viewing a static image in order to preserve that battery life. And as you can see, if you want to manually select the refresh rate as well, you've got a choice of 60 or 120 hertz on the regular Xiaomi 12, whereas the Pro also offers a 90 hertz option. Now, the speakers have been fine-tuned by Amon Kodon on both of these phones. Supposedly, you have a quad speaker arrangement on the Pro model with the dual tweeters and woofers as well, whereas the Xiaomi 12 has a more regular stereo speaker arrangement. And perhaps surprisingly, the regular Xiaomi 12 actually pumps out louder audio on that top volume versus the Pro model, although the quality isn't quite as strong. Let's do a quick side-by-side -side so you can compare. So you fancy yourself a quality new smartphone, but unfortunately your bank statement is looking about as healthy as a diabetic pensioner on a strict diet of Krispy Kreme donuts and special brew. So the actual clarity, the quality of the audio are definitely better on that Pro model, but if you just want some really extremely loud volume to, you know, cut through a noisy household, for instance, if you're trying to watch a YouTube video without headphones, then definitely this one will do the job. Oh, and while there's no headphone jack on either of these flagships, you do at least get Bluetooth 5.2 support, and it seems nice and dependable, absolutely no issues streaming to speakers or headphones. So now performance, and both Xiaomi flagships run the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, the latest, freshest, top-end Qualcomm SoC for smartphones. Slight difference in the memory, you've got 8 gigs here on my Xiaomi 12. You can get it up to 12 gigs, I believe, in some regions. Whereas I've got 12 gigs packed into my Xiaomi 12 Pro, hence slightly better benchmarking scores there. The good news is the everyday running on both these blows, as you would kind of hope for and expect from premium priced flagship smartphones, is flawless, not a single little judder or stumble as you're flicking through the various menus, your apps, they all load up quickly and cleanly. And of course, because it's a premium Snapdragon, no issues on the network inside of things either. You've got strong 5G support, you've got Wi-Fi 6E, all that good stuff. And if you're a gaming fan, well, basically take your pick. The Xiaomi 12 Pro, of course, with that more spacious screen, slightly better suited to the likes of Call of Duty Mobile, where it's a little bit easier to see somebody lurking in the distance. You can snipe them in the face before they blow your tits off. But besides that, it's basically an identical, super smooth, super streamlined gaming experience on both of these handsets. The Xiaomi 12 and the Pro can both handle like some Genshin impact, ramped up to the highest detail settings on that 60 frames per second mode too. 
Is it 100% flawless? No, not quite. You will see the occasional little dip in uh, the frame rate, usually when things get pretty intensive in the heat of battle. But literally in an hour long session, you can count on one hand the number of times you'll see that frame rate drop. It's generally pretty damn dependable. And speaking of hour long sessions on Genshin Impact, the good news is that the Xiaomi 12, despite being more compact than the Pro, once again doesn't really seem to heat up under pressure, despite the fact it's got that 8 Gen 1 inside. This more compact model once again has that liquid cool text. We're talking about graphite and graphene sheeting, plus a vapor chamber stuffed inside there as well. Particularly impressive for this dinky regular model. And the Xiaomi 12, like the Pro once again, sports that game turbo mode as well. So you can boost up to make sure you've got maximum performance on the go for your games. You can hit up a sort of do not disturb type mode to make sure you don't have any notifications popping up and ruining your perfect killing spree. Lots of little tools and features in there to play around with. As for the battery tech, there's surprisingly little difference in the battery capacity from this standard regular Xiaomi 12 and that Pro model. It's a 4,500 mAh cell stuffed in here, 4,600 in the Pro version. Now I have found that the Xiaomi 12 Pro's battery life isn't quite as good as I was hoping it would be. Certainly not a patch on the likes of the Oppo Find X5 Pro, the Pixel 6 Pro either. It tends to sort of be struggling towards the end of the day, so I'm hoping it's not going to be the same here on the Xiaomi 12. It does have a smaller uh, screen to power, for instance. And on the Pro model, I do think some of those battery woes are down to the actual software. I think it might need a little bit of optimizing going on. And, you know, considering these phones haven't actually officially launched at the time I'm testing them out, hopefully the software patching will come through soon and sort that right out. Definitely worth bearing in mind though, and I will try and get you a full on review of the Xiaomi 12 uh, soon behind the Pro, which I currently have my SIM stuffed inside of. So a full review of that bad boy coming in the next day or so. And when you are fully drained and in need of a bit of extra juice, the good news is that both these Xiaomi blows fill up really fast. You've got 67 watt wired charging support here on the regular Xiaomi 12. The Pro model upgrades that to 120 watt crazy fast and you've also got 50 watt wireless charging support on both of these handsets. Woof! So let's finish up this Xiaomi 12 unboxing and Pro comparison with a squint at the camera tech and like the Pro you've once again got a 50 megapixel primary sensor but it's the Sony IMX 766 on the regular Xiaomi 12 versus the 7 or 7 here on the 12 Pro. And the actual camera experience is very similar on both of these flagship smartphones. You've got phase detection autofocus and optical image stabilization built in. One of the perks of these phones that I really like is the fact that not only do you have motion tracking, but you've also got eye focus as well. So really good if you are trying to shoot pets or kids who are dodging about all over the place, super off their tits on sugar or cat food or whatever. Both the 12 and the Pro will help to keep them locked in, make sure they stay nice and sharp in your photo. And I found that my everyday photos came out pretty damn similar on the 12 compared with the Pro. You will get richer tones compared with what you'll see with the naked eye, so don't expect supernatural results from these handsets. And that's even with the AI mode knocked off as well, which didn't seem to make much of a difference there, but very pleasing to the eye all the same. Nice, vivid, vibrant colours in general. HDR situations aren't too much of a trouble. It's rare to see any kind of whitewashing or saturation going on, and still plenty of detail packed into those darker areas. And yes, in those low light scenarios, the Xiaomi 12 Pro does produce slightly brighter photos with less grain compared with the standard Xiaomi 12, but the Xiaomi 12 really isn't far behind. That 766 cups really well with darker environments and produces some really nice crisp detailed photos. And while it is a triple lens setup on both these smartphones, you do again have different hardware. So it's a basic 13 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter here on the Xiaomi 12. The Pro model upgrades that to a 50 megapixel effort. So you can expect finer detail and stronger, brighter results when it's a more ambient sort of environment as well. And then the final lens here on the regular Xiaomi 12 is a basic telemacro effort, so good for those extreme close-ups. Whereas the Pro model goes for a 50 megapixel telephoto shooter with 2 times optical zoom. And you do of course have plenty of bonus camera modes to play around with as well, including the obligatory portrait mode, which just adds a nice bokeh style effect behind them. As you can see there, this actually uses the telephoto lens here on the Pro, whereas it's just the regular lens on the Xiaomi 12. You've got a proper Pro mode on the Xiaomi 12 as well as that Pro as well, so you can tinker with the likes of the shutter speed, the ISO levels, you can bump up to that maximum 50 meg resolution if you want. You can shoot in RAW, all the usual good times. And yes, as usual, loads of bonus camera modes that you can play around with as well. Mostly the same stuff, though you've got the likes of the super moon mode here on the Pro, again using that telephoto lens. Now swap to video, and it's a similar story on the Xiaomi 12 as it is on the Pro. You can shoot video at up to 8K resolution. 
at 24 frames per second. Otherwise, if you bump it down to 4K, you've got a choice of 30 or 60 FPS. And on that Ultra HD level, you can even shoot HDR footage. And I found that the video recording chops on the Xiaomi 12, just like the Pro, super, super solid. I just leave it at 4K most of the time because I don't want to absolutely kill my admittedly quite generous 256 gigs of internal storage. And yeah, you can expect fine detail. Again, not the most natural looking colors, but the audio pickup is fine as well. So great for those home movies. And then last of all, up front, you've got the same 32 megapixel selfie shooter for your Instagram action. And again, quite dependable tech, even if you're dealing with quite strong lighting in the background or if you're in quite a dark, dingy environment. So that right there in a nutshell is the fresh new Xiaomi 12 flagship blower and how it compares with its bigger, more expensive Pro sibling. And I've got to say that more compact nature of the regular Xiaomi 12 and the fact that it packs a lot of the same premium features as the Pro model just makes me fall utterly in love with it. Yeah, you don't have a telephoto shooter on the camera lens, a couple of other bits like that, which a lot of other flagship smartphones do offer, admittedly, certainly around this sort of 749 price point. But you've got impressive performance, especially for gaming, helped along by that coolant tech, which just keeps the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 in check. You've also hopefully got respectable battery life. I will be testing that out for my in depth review. The regular camera does a bang up job for your everyday photos and video. Strong media chops and a satisfying software experience. But anyway, that's my thoughts on the regular Xiaomi 12. What do you guys reckon? Are you tempted by that or maybe by the Pro model? Definitely be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech and have yourselves a bloody wonderful rest of the week. Cheers everyone. Love you.